Hi, I'm DJ Moran, and it is my absolute honor to answer questions for folks about acceptance and commitment therapy. So if you would dig that kind of stuff, learning about ACT, like and subscribe. I get questions by email. Sometimes I see them on my social media pages. I get them from graduate students or in live workshops, or I get them in the Q&A dashboard during my webinars. And that's where this one comes from. So this was asked by Leah. What if you have values that seem to be in conflict with one another? Especially thinking about this example of wanting to rear your children to live a healthy life and also your career is valuable to you as well. I know my mom clients really struggle with this. Cool, Leah. Great question. Stuff like this comes up fairly often in ACT workshops and also in psychotherapy. So I'm going to make the assumption that the psychotherapist who ask this question already understands the basics of ACT and how to do some preliminary values work. Because you know, with this question, if it really came up this way in therapy with a client saying, hey, I care about my kids and I care about my career, which one should I choose? Well, then we'd have to do a lot of preliminary work with that person. And that's not what Leah asked and that a or B choice rarely happens in therapy. But part of the preliminary work would be having the client clarify or author what they genuinely care about. We'd have to work on turning the conversation from the things that they care about into genuine value statements in psychotherapy. But that's not the topic. I imagine Leah's question and, and your curiosity about this is beyond that simple split between the two. So we're talking about values, and Siri Ming and I define values in a simple manner in our book, Finding Your Why and Finding Your Way. Values are what you care about doing and the way you choose to do those actions. Values are ways of talking about what we want our life to be about. So I'm just formulating how I'm going to answer Leah's questions. It's rarely a matter of, hey, I care about my kids and I care about my career. Which one should I choose? Those two things are just categories of valued domains anyway. You don't really choose between them. And first, I want to reword the question in a way that's a little bit more act consistent and advanced. It was just a brief you know, dashboard where that question was asked. If this were a professional consultation or psychotherapy, we'd want to be a little bit more clear about what we're talking about. It's like this, the client saying, hey, something I really care about in my life is rearing my children to live a full, abundant, healthy, flexible life. And I also have a career where I can engage in other values-based behaviors. You know, I'm an artist. And I really want to use my talent and creativity to make the world a more aesthetically pleasing place. And I'm struggling with that. I can't paint and write music all the time. And well, frankly, I'd probably burst if I were just momming all the time. I'm struggling when my, my values are at loggerheads with this stuff. And I get it. At first glance, it might seem like these values are at conflict, but I'd like to suggest right here, the client really doesn't have a values conflict. The client is really clear about what they care about. My first part of this answer is just that. Oftentimes, values aren't in conflict. The issue really might just be scheduling. They might need the skills of effective planning, right? I mean, like, how do you find time to engage in committed actions related to parenting, and how do you find time to engage in committed actions related to creating art? So that's just a first step here, but it's legit. Sometimes teaching time management might be the therapist's approach here. I know, I know that it could be more complex than that, but let's just look at the simpler fundamental component skills before diving deeper. Maybe the simple solution is just the most helpful, maybe. And maybe learning how to schedule things might be the most important thing to do at this particular point. Which brings up the next topic, which gets a little bit deeper in therapy, and that's finding the balance between the two. You know the phrase work-life balance? But I despise that phrase. I mean, ugh, balance to me means you're going to do each of the two 50-50. And that's impossible. I mean, just to start, it's silly to be mathematical about it. I mean, can you imagine? I'm going to commit to spending 8 hours and 15 minutes with my daughter today and 8 hours and 15 minutes with my guitar. It's just impractical. 
it's like, you know, imagine this with that kind of commitment, the kid comes in the door and uh, comes in and says, uh, uh, Mom, uh, I'm home. Uh, we had early dismissal today. Uh, I walked home because I didn't see you in the parking lot. So uh, since I walked home, I actually tripped and skinned my knee on the sidewalk. I'm bleeding a lot, Ma. And she's down in the basement working on her art commitment. And she yells up, oh, okay, hon. I'll be upstairs to take care of you in 45 minutes. I made a commitment to work on this James Taylor song. And uh, I'm going to be up there at uh, 3 p.m. I mean... Act is all about psychological flexibility, right? So the balance isn't such a great viewpoint. I like the idea of work-life harmony instead, or just harmonizing your values. You got a root note, and then there are others that accentuate it, support it, really make it come to life. And then there's a whole melody to a flexible lifestyle where different notes can be the one that gets focused on at a different time and the others do the support. Another way to talk about it is like work-life balance means you might do parenting for a significant majority of the time today and find time when they're sleeping to not fold clothes and clean up toys, but work on creating your art specifically. Make your life about what's meaningful and vital and find ways to harmonize all these notes. And here's the most important part from an act point of view. I think that this is what Leah might have wanted with the question, but I had to give a lot of that preamble first. How about if you can work with your client who might have these kinds of struggles to see that values run throughout all their life? Values are like the thread that puckers the material of life. And if you want to be very mindfulness-based, very contact with the present moment as a therapist, then realize that values are chosen moment by moment. Right here, right now, this is what I care about. I might imagine if I were a therapist in this situation, it might be a little like this. You know, when you are momming, as you put it, you are engaging in your artistic values. You are. By raising artists, how you teach them could make the world a more beautiful place. More practically, we could talk about how you start out these little Picassos with crayons and Play-Doh and bang on pots and pans and then move them into other skillful activities as they develop. But even more importantly, you can also be artistic in the way you act with them. And then even one step beyond, you can engage in reinforcing and modeling open-mindedness, ingenuity, the, tor the core skills of being artistic and not really being judgmental about their attempts at trying new things. And I'm not talking about whether or not they color within the lines or not, but like how they clean their room, how they dress themselves. You can parent artistically, and in so doing, you make the world a more beautiful place through your kids. And in addition, while you're doing your art commitments, realize you are parenting. You need to do self-care. So you need to have energy to be with the kids. I mean, fundamentally, you got to sharpen the axe. You know what I mean? Like, if you keep chopping a tree for a long time, the axe gets dull. You need to take a break to sharpen that axe. You wear yourself out momming all the time. You need to take breaks and do other things. I mean, it's, it's cliche now, um, but on the airplane, the flight attendant says, in the event of a sudden drop in pressure, an oxygen mask will drop from above. Secure your own mask before you assist others. This idea of ensuring our own well-being is at the center of self-care. And if you haven't cared for yourself, it's hard to care for others. Paint, play guitar, simply listen to good music instead of Baby Shark all day. But going just a little bit further, painting is momming. I mean, if you sell the art, you, you might pay for your kids' clothes. But more complexly, painting is momming because you are demonstrating independence, self-direction, how to live your life in harmony, eh? So, back to the question. 
What if you have values that seem to be in conflict with each other when you're in therapy, when you're doing the therapy? Well, number one, consider, are they really in conflict or does the client just need help with prioritizing on their schedule? Is it a scheduling issue? Not really a values conflict. And then take a look at how values are the thread that puckers the material of their life and see if it can become something you put into harmony with each of the several values. Can the value-directed behavior be put in harmony? And then also see if you can help the client notice how a committed action related to a value might actually serve more than just one value. Can you link your actions to have meaning among several values? Values are what you care about doing and the way you choose to do those actions. Values are ways of talking about what we want our life to be about. Let me know what you think. I do fully realize that there's more to say about this and that there are other valid viewpoints. Act as a functional contextual therapy so we aim to ensure our interventions are functional in the client's context. And there was just a lot of speculation here, right? It's just a random question that came up in a Q&A function. Uh, there's complexities to human behavior and clinical psychology, so please be cool and kind in the comments. If you want more stuff like this, uh, please like and subscribe and uh, write me a question.